Hi there, my name is John. I'm from the Kelp Department here at the University of East London with another one of our shortcut videos providing ideas and advice on teaching and learning technology. Now, when Kevin and I were doing a Moodle Roadshow the other week, we were asked about how you can embed a Twitter feed into Moodle. And it's a great question, and there seems to be quite a bit of interest from people wanting to know how to do this. So, here we are to provide you with a step by step guide on embedding your Twitter feed into Moodle. Let's get cracking. Okay, so first the bad news. Getting your social media into Moodle is going to require coding. The good news, though, is that you don't have to write any of it or even know what any of it means. All you need to do is to be able to copy it from one place and paste it into another. It all hinges on a block that you can add into your Moodle course. It's called the HTML block, and this is where our journey begins. The blocks on your Moodle page are these various squares that appear on the right hand side of your page. There are lots of different blocks available for you to add to your course page. So the ones that you see on your page might vary from those that you can see right here. First, we're going to switch into edit mode so that we can start making some changes. As soon as we are in edit mode, you can see that two icons appear in the top right corner of each block. Now these provide us with all the tools we need for moving and modifying these blocks. This little crosshair type icon is what we can use to move the block around. By clicking and holding on this, I can drag it up and down to reorder the blocks. Alternatively, I can simply click once on this little icon and a wee dialog box opens up with a list of all the blocks on the page and you can choose where you want it to go. Now this cog icon next to the crosshairs is where the settings for the block live. The configure option will give you the option for that particular block and of course each block will have a different set of options according to its function. So the calendar block will give you calendar settings, the panopto block will give you panopto settings and so on. And from here you can hide your blocks as well so the students don't see them or if you want to get really fancy change the permissions for who can see them and who can't. To add blocks we need to go to this panel on the left. Now this panel slides in and out when you use this little toggle switch at the top. This is a particularly handy feature for anyone accessing Moodle on a mobile device where maximizing screen space is critical. The option to add a new block can be found right down at the bottom of this panel. So if we scroll down, there it is. Add a block. Let's click on it. Now, I don't know about you, but I think this looks really exciting. I mean, just, just look at all the cool things that you can add to your Moodle page. Look at it. You can add RSS feeds if you want a constantly updated link to podcast or a blog. You can uh, add course summaries here. Look, uh, there's some new ones too, like the heat map and private files. Um, we'll be getting all enthusiastic about these in another video sometime. For now, though, it's this one that we need, the HTML block. So let's go ahead and select it. Done. Now, if we browse down our blocks, somewhere we'll see a new one called New HTML Block. There it is. Doesn't look very interesting right now, but it will do soon. Just you wait. To make any changes to an HTML block, we need to go into the settings icon and select Configure New HTML Block. The configuration page is pretty simple. You can give your block a title by adding it in here, though you can leave it blank if you want to as well. This main part here is where you add the content of the block itself. Now this could be as simple as writing a bunch of text, adding an image or a, a video. You can of course make the text or images hyperlinks if you want your students to be able to click on them and be directed to other content. The real power of the HTML block is in its ability to handle code, though. And to demonstrate this, we need some code to use, which brings us to Now, social media sites like Twitter and Facebook provide pre-prepared code so that you can add feeds into web pages and on sites like Moodle. You just need to know where to find them. For Twitter, they're actually quite easy to find. 
Just click on your icon in the top right corner. If you hover over it, you can see it says Profile and Settings. In here, there are a number of options, and the one you want is Settings and Privacy. Now, this is where you can edit all your Twitter settings, and if you haven't already explored the privacy options, then it might be a good idea to put that on your to-do list for later. Right now, though, we're interested in widgets, which is just down here. Now, there's nothing here right now because we're not actually using any, so let's create a new one. You'll get a list of options here. I'm just going to go right ahead and choose Profile so that we can move on to the next step. And I'll come back to one of the other options in our wee bonus features, step five at the end. So here we are with a nice clean page and it's asking us what we want to embed, what exactly we want to show up on our Moodle page. Now to embed a feed, we need to put in here the handle, for example, uh, UEL News. Choose whether you want to include the whole timeline or just a button taking you to Twitter. I'm going to choose the feed option and you'll see underneath what it will look like. You can see all the tweets from that account. And if you have a Twitter account yourself, you can reply to posts or share them directly from the widget. The code we need can be seen in this box here, just above the example. Handily, there's a simple button for us to click if we want to copy it, which we do. Now we have our code, and we are ready for... We're back now with our Moodle block, and here is the main section where we want to add our code. Now this is an important part. As the block is now, it's ready to accept text, but not code. In other words, any text I type in now will appear in the block exactly as I type it. If I paste in the code now and save, you can see that the block just shows the code, which is pretty hopeless. If we want to add code to a block, we need to make sure that Moodle is reading it as code. And there is an obscure little button we need to press to do this. It's this little angle brackets button here. If you hover over it, the giveaway is that it says HTML, referring to the code language for websites. Click on this and we get a window ready to accept code. It's in here that we need to paste our code. Click on update. And we see an underwhelming little bit of text, but don't be put off by this. Click on Save Changes, and when you look for the block itself, you should see your Twitter feed being displayed in all its glory. Brilliant. At this point, you may be thinking that this is, well, it's all very well, but I now have this ridiculously long feed on my page. Is there any way I can make it a little shorter? Well, yes, there is. For this, we need to go back to our Twitter widget creation page. The particularly observant among you may already have noticed this before we went through this page. But just here above where the code button is, there's a link for customization options. If you click on this, you can see options for changing the size of your widget. The height is measured in pixels, so just how big it looks will depend on the size of your screen, but you can get a live preview of any changes you make. So I'm just going to add 100 and see what happens. Oh, blimey. Okay. Uh, not very big at all, is it? So I tell you what, let's add another zero to that. Now well, that's better. Now, okay, I'm happy with the size. I can click on update to get the new code. There it is. Now, if you look, you can now see the height is included in the code. Once again, copy the code and go back to your Moodle block. To change my Moodle block, I will again click on the cog icon and select the option to configure the block. And here we are again. But remember, we need to change the mode into a code mode. So I'll click on the little angle bracket symbol, and this will bring up the window where we can see our original code. Simply delete the old code, paste in the new code, and click on Update. Save the changes, and bingo, there's our nicely resized code. Yes, every hour is happy hour in Kelt, so you get this wee bonus extra totally free of charge. Because you can do more than just embed your own Twitter feed. 
Twitter can be an excellent source of information because there are lots of writers and academics who share and post work and links here. Let's go back to the Twitter widgets page. Again, we go to the profile and settings options from the home page and select widgets. And again, we'll click on the create button, but this time though, we'll go for the search option. This brings up a different widget creation page where we can create a feed based on any search or hashtag we want to enter. The default example here means that, well, you see this rather disturbing feed of posts related to Corby dogs, but I mean, we can enter anything we like into this search query box here. For example, if I were to enter study skills, I'll get a feed of every post that mentions study skills. If I type Brexit, then again, I'll get everything relating to that subject. Although it might be worth mentioning at this point, it's always worth making sure you have the safe search option ticked. Perhaps even more powerful though, is the use of hashtags. This picks up everything that users have posted in relation to an established issue of interest. For example, a popular hashtag for academics and writers is the hashtag ACRI. If I enter this hashtag, I'll now get a feed full of useful tips and advice for academic writers. A terrific tool to help you find the most useful hashtags is the website WriteTag. Here, you can search for the best hashtags related to any particular topic. So, well, for example, let's try business management. Now here the website has produced a number of different hashtag options related to that topic, but more importantly, it provides us with some data on what those hashtags are likely to generate. The hashtag business management might seem the most directly related to the topic of business management, but look at the statistics and there's relatively few posts being made using this hashtag and even fewer that seem to include any links to anything useful. The hashtag management on its own, though, produces a lot of tweets per hour, and the majority of those seem to include links to other sources. If I click on the hashtag, I can get even more detailed information about who is posting using it. And I can see from this that the majority of posts seem to come from the US, and this is clear both from the map and from the time when most of the tweets get sent. So let's enter this into our widget creator. I can change the height of the widget if I want to, or go for a darker version if I think it makes things more visible. And when we're ready, simply click on the button to create widget. There's our preview, and here is our code. Just as with the previous code, we need to copy this code and then return to the Moodle block configuration. Remember again to switch into the coding mode by clicking on the angle bracket symbol and paste the code into the window. Click on update and save. And there is your search block, providing students with a dynamic stream of news, updates and information related to your particular subject. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. This has been a shortcut video from the Kelp Department at the University of East London. Toodlepip.